Hi, good morning guys. Uh, today we are finishing off the mock 14 SBQs. I'm doing the last one, the 14th one. It's based on red and white lesions and uh, precancerous lesions. But just before I start, uh, I mean, I was I just opened my mobile to uh, see if I had any comments from the video that I posted last night. Uh, like I had mentioned, uh, I was shooting pretty late at night and today I have a very busy day. So I thought I'll just finish quickly as your exams are also coming up. I thought I'll just be taking out a little more extra time to help you all. So usually whenever I open my uh, YouTube and I see the comments that the people have left, either they are asking me a question about something or they are requesting me to make another video about some other topic or they are simply being very thankful and grateful that I, I explain the concept or they are appreciating. Uh, it's You know what? It's really nice to connect with you all because uh, I'm not a robot. You're not a robot and we are not machines. We, we are human beings and we talk and we are colleagues here. We are all dentists out here. Uh, so it, it was very uh, disheartening to find a comment like this. You see, uh, this is a very nice comment and everybody is being very nice and respectful. But there was this dentist who just, uh, yeah, the video starts at 5-15 minutes. Thank you, but we are not interested in your life. I was like, well, if you don't want to watch, don't watch. Why coming out with a hate speech, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm literally shooting these videos for free. Like I'm taking out time and I wish to help. Because at some point of time, even I wish somebody would have helped me. And there are people who helped me. Uh, but I just wished I would have guarded a bit more. And I don't want anybody else to feel that way. Because when I I see guidance, I have to be the change myself too, right? If I don't give out, I can't expect to receive back either. And though I shoot the videos without any expectation, I try to do my best. It was a little disheartening, but then, then I thought this is what hate speech is all about, you know. No matter what you do, people are going to throw stones at you. Uh, but then, of course, uh, there are hundreds of other candidates or just the watchers who leave such beautiful comments that keeps me motivated to go on. So, yeah, it's fine. Like, sending this particular person, Ria, whoever she is, lots of love. Let the hate come out of her heart. Anyways, so let's go to uh, the SBQ at hand. A 39-year-old woman has a white patch on the lateral margin of her tongue. See, whenever you have a question which has a lesion in the oral cavity, it can be either one of those red and white lesions or it can be a precancerous lesion. Why, why the question has to mention the site? Because certain sites in the oral cavity are just more predisposed to having cancerous predispositions. They are a high risk sites. So whenever you see something on those sites, you have to immediately refer to the specialist. And like the lateral border of the tongue, the floor of the mouth. These are very high risk sites because usually no lesions happens out here. Uh, and these areas have a very high lymphatic drainage. So if any lesion, a suspected lesion is out there, uh, the lymphatic drainage is very strong and it can very quickly spread to the rest of the body, metastasizing those areas and then treatment becomes very difficult. So the earlier you spot, the earlier you refer, the earlier it is cured, better chances of life survival, okay? So, uh, the lateral border of the tongue and the lower floor of the mouth is very, very important. So, anyways, now when I read this question has a white patch on the lateral margin of the tongue, I'm like, okay, I'm very attentive. Uh, the patient is an infrequent dental attender, okay, not a regular attendee, and has not been to the dentist for at least five years. After participating in a week-long oral cancer awareness program, she inspected her mouth and became nervous about her tongue. So she discovered it. Probably the lesion was there since a long time. But now that she got educated in a week-long cancer awareness program, she started inspecting her own tongue. Now she would have liked to she would like to have it checked. Medical history is otherwise fit and well. Now she has Two very important factors which are going on which are she smokes 40 cigarettes a day and that was since the age of 18 and she's 39 so since 18 plus years she's smoking 40 cigarettes 
and she drinks like 14 units of alcohol per week. The maximum limit of alcohol is anyways 14 units of alcohol per week and she's consuming that also. Al alcohol by itself and smoking by itself, individually, not combined. They themselves are a risk for oral cancer. But when combined together, the risk is five times more. And this is mentioned in Odell. So she's already at a very high risk of having cancer. And when you see something in the mouth, a patch, you have to think it can be a precancerous lesion or it can be a cancerous lesion. So the first, first, first very step is to tell the a patient to visit the specialist and the specialist is going to do a biopsy, okay, to know what it is. So let's see what are the sub questions. So they have given a picture of, uh, of course, this picture I've taken from Google. I cannot get the picture from the exam, but a similar picture uh, would have been probably there in the exam. Now, what would make you suspect the lesion to be serious? Color, location, surface, texture, duration of the lesion. According to me, all are correct. But if I have to choose just one option, duration of the lesion would be on a little bit of low priority. Surface texture would be a little high priority because sometimes if the surface is ulcerated, it's, it's indurated, it's averted, giving all the signs of squamous carcinoma or any other type, that is also going to make me suspect. Um, color, well, color, it depends. In, uh, if it's not infected, it may just look a normal pinkish color. So color is on my low priority and the location. Now, I have to choose between location and surface texture. So, like I said, there are certain locations in the mouth which are very high risk. Now, a tongue lesion, even though if it's a smooth lesion, I would still suspect it to be something. So, even though the surface texture would be smooth, very nice, pinkish, no bleeding, nothing, I would still suspect something because it's on the tongue. But if it was just a smooth something lesion like on the cheek, probably I would have said, you know, okay, let's see what it is going through. I wouldn't be that serious, serious. I would still refer to the specialist, but I wouldn't be like worried or concerned that much. It's a cheek lesion. Let's see, maybe it's a burn, it's something else. But the tongue doesn't react that way. A tongue lesion usually develops only if something is happening, you know. So that location of the lesion would be my highest priority. Then I'll come to the surface texture, then the duration of the lesion and ultimately the color. That would be my sequence of choosing the answer. So in your exam, if you're getting uh, this question with uh, sorts of options, similar ones, choose the one which is of the highest priority. Others are not wrong either. It's just you have to choose one. So you'll choose of the highest priority. Now, lesion was presented a little below the lateral border of the tongue. Which biopsy would you perform? Ideally, refer to the specialist, let them perform. But in case you have to perform any lesion of the tongue or in the oral cavity, unless it happens to be uh, a fibroma with a stalk or something, uh, you always do an incisional biopsy. You won't do a complete excision. Especially in the floor of the mouth and the tongue ones, you don't know the depth of the lesion. How would you know if you have excised it completely? And you don't even know what that lesion is. But if it's a small fibroma with a pedunculated stalk, you can just excise that entire lesion. And in that scenario, it would be called as an excisional biopsy. In this scenario, you will be doing an incisional biopsy, which means you'll be taking a part of the lesion and a part of a normal tongue tissue and uh, you'll be sending it. it it won't be more than a centimeter or so fine needle aspiration is usually done in cyst there is no point doing a fine needle out here punch biopsy is not a wrong option either uh, but still i would go with an inc incisional biopsy In a punch biopsy uh, there would be a certain depth to it and uh, it requires some certain specialized equipments which i doubt a general dentist would be having but a scalpel and a blade definitely you'll have so as a general dentist, you can perform an incisional biopsy. But again, if there was a small fibroma kind of a lesion, you can also perform an excisional biopsy. Now, the maximum alcohol intake is considered safe for all of the following except. Now, in textbooks, uh, certain dosages of alcohol are given that this is a safe limit. Like for a normal person, 14 units are safe according to the Australian guidelines. Example, you are having a liver problem, so probably a less amount is safe. You are having a cardiovascular problem, again, a little less amount is safe. But so far, no limit is decided yet. 
for a person having cancer why because alcohol itself is one of the trigger factors for or a risk factor for cancer so so far no no safe limit is decided so if a patient comes and asks you okay fine i have a bit of a cancer and uh, i'm taking the cancer medications but can i have alcohol how much is the safe limit there is no safe limit safe limit defined so far so you have to just say you have to stop alcohol until you are cured so uh, again let's go back to the question the maximum alcohol intake is considered safe for all of the following except which means the question is telling you for which of the options it is not safe so like i mentioned in terms of cancer risk it's there is no safe the safe limit defined so i'm going to go with that answer i've given a feedback out here please read this lesion has been diagnosed as squamous cell carcinoma at an early stage what is the treatment it's a carcinoma and it is a squamous cell carcinoma which means it's not benign this carcinoma has the tendency to metastasize and it's a very aggressive form of carcinoma so surgery alone is not an option surgery followed by radiotherapy correct surgery followed by radiotherapy with or without chemotherapy is also correct surgery which could be followed by radiotherapy with or without chemotherapy could be and the c option is definitely followed by radiotherapy now here it's an early stage lesion option b c and d all of them are correct but it's not necessary that you need to have a radiotherapy or a chemotherapy so the option c is saying that you have to do surgery but it definitely has to be followed by either by followed by radiotherapy with or without chemotherapy so there has to be surgery there has to be radiotherapy chemotherapy may or may not follow that's option c option d is saying you have to do surgery and then radiotherapy and chemotherapy both are optional now because it's an early stage and if it was a really small lesion and you have done all the study work the specialist and they decide that it's not metastasized to any lymph node or something and they think let's let's just do a surgery and get rid of this lesion in that area itself then probably you may not require radiotherapy or probably you may require radiotherapy so it is optional so since since they have mentioned this term early stage i am more likely to go with option d where definitely the surgery is being done but both radiotherapy and chemotherapy are optional it's not mandatory okay so since i have option d i'll go with that if i didn't have option d probably i would have gone with option c so in exam you'll have five options to get through all that and because it's an early stage lesion option d seems more appropriate to me now if treated in early stage a 5 year survival date would be i think this is given in odell and it's 85% hence i'm going with that if they would have given 80% i would have gone with them i really don't know what's the survival rate uh, percentage so i'm just following the book and it says 85% so yeah that's about it so what you are supposed to read for today uh, read a case of squamous cell carcinoma from any one of your textbooks go to a del read from that um, read about red and white lesions read about uh, the most uh what do you say high risk sites in the oral cavity it's usually the floor of the mouth and the lateral side of the tongue read about uh, more of lichen planus and these comedative gingivitis erythroplakia read more on uh, radiotherapy chemotherapy read about the radiation dose for radiotherapy read about uh, osteoradio necrosis all the lateral topics that come from radiotherapy i even shared an article on radiotherapy i think it's there on the facebook group the target adc and i've shared it to the enrolled candidates group also a nice article i had found because there was one question that how many uh, gyras of uh, radiation you give in radiotherapy and Uh, at what dose teeth are not affected at what dose osteoradio osteoradio necrosis is not expected to happen because there was one question asked so uh 
research, do, do Google and you will find these things. Dedicate one hour after you see this video to read all these topics. All right. So have a nice day and uh, do leave your comments. I really like to read them because it keeps me motivated to shoot the videos. Otherwise, I do have my, um, what do you say, mock test plans and I keep on getting emails on a daily basis. I just reply to the email, sending them the course details and all. Uh, there is really no need for me to keep shooting the videos, but it's just that uh, once I had started and uh, I got such nice responses uh, and I felt connected to so many of you all and I read so many of your emails, you know, every, every day I read uh, all those people and you know that I reply maximum a delay of a day will happen, but I do reply and I really feel happy when you all tell me the long stories about from where you are, what you do, why you want to migrate and uh, I mean, so many students have asked questions to me other than dentistry about various topics because you feel connected, that's why, you know. Uh, so I'm going to continue to share whatever I feel is appropriate. Like, it's my channel. And uh, I'm not going to let the hate speech affect me. Uh, yeah, I mean, I had read earlier that a lot of uh, uh, YouTubers on the uh, YouTube and whoever have, like, the social media influencers, though I'm not one of them, uh, get hate speech and I was like what is that now this is me practically experiencing <laughs> so yeah my first experience and there I shared with you so have a nice day guys bye bye